Hey everyone, welcome to Tony for Supreme Evil. Uh, I mean Tony for you. Many people think they understand Lucifer. Lucifer and Satan are prevalent entities in religious texts and Shin Megami Tensei, but many don't truly understand the importance of them, and some even think they're the same. Lucifer and Satan are so important to Abrahamic religions that it would be impossible to discuss everything about them, but we'll go over the most important and relevant stories regarding the characters in the Bible and associated texts. First, discussing how these two entities are different, and their individual roles in the spirituality of contemporary belief. Without any further ado, let's talk about Lucifer and Satan. This video is made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord, so if you want to come chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. To begin with, before going into the deeper lore of either figure, it should be understood that these two figures are in fact different entities. Kind of. Let's discuss their first appearances in the Bible. Lucifer is first mentioned in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, where it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Here we see Lucifer set up in no small parts as the supreme evil of the world, a being so vile and powerful his mere existence weakens the nations of men and forever plagues our lives. There are other possible interpretations of Lucifer in the Bible, such as the serpent in Genesis, but for concrete mentions, this is the first. The first mention of Satan in the Bible is in the Old Testament's Numbers 22, with the story of Balaam, the donkey, and the angel. Balaam was a man living in Moab, ruled by King Balak. Preceding the freeing of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, they began to proliferate under the guidance of God, and even take over nearby settlements like Jericho. Balaam was knowledgeable in the ways of curses as well as blessings. So knowledgeable, in fact, that King Balak enlisted his services to bring woe to the people of Israel. In any other circumstance, Balaam would have gone through with the king's orders, but this time, God spoke directly to the sorcerer. God commanded Balaam not to curse his chosen people, but when he told the king he could not go with him, Balak took the man by force. Riding his donkey, Balaam rode out to meet the king and, then God's anger was aroused because he went and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him, and he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. The word Satan in Hebrew is often translated to the word adversary, or simply one who opposes. Other, more literal translations of this excerpt are, Balaam's departure aroused the wrath of Elohim, and the angel of Yahweh stood in the road as a Satan against him. This angel stood in the way of Balaam, with his sword drawn, and when the sorcerer noticed him, he bowed to the ground and said, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. The angel instructed Balaam to go along to King Balak, but only speak the words the Lord puts in his mouth. When it came time to curse the people of Israel, Balaam blessed them seven times, unable to speak anything other than God's word. From these stories, it's easy to understand that these two beings are separate entities. Lucifer is clearly portrayed as a being wholly against the will of God, and does everything in his power to destroy and tempt humans. Where the second stories, Satan was explicitly an agent of God, sent to convey his message and protect the blessed Israelites. In later stories from following biblical books, there are other entities carrying the title of Satan, in considerably less benevolent circumstances. The book of Job centers around an angel questioning or opposing God's faith in a particularly holy human named Job. God spoke of Job in glowing praise, describing how virtuous he is to all the other angels in heaven. One particular angel confronts God, arguing that Job is not virtuous because he is a good man. He is simply virtuous due to the blessings of God given to him from birth. Now donning the title of the Satan, the angel argued that if Job faced considerable hardship, his faith would surely falter. God decided to keep his faith in Job, and allowed this Satan to do with Job's life as he pleased. Satan set to work torturing Job and dismantling his very life. You can learn more about this book in my Mastema video, who may be the Satan in this very story. Ultimately, we can come to the conclusion that Satan isn't even an entity per se, simply a title donned by one who opposes. 
From context, we can surmise that Satan is specifically used in religious circumstances, for angels or agents of the Lord. Lucifer, on the other hand, is clearly only one entity. With the stories explaining Satan established, let's explain Lucifer for contrast. Before Lucifer was a prince of darkness, he was a being residing in the seventh layer of heaven, God's throne. Only angels of immense power and trust could be in direct audience with God, and Lucifer was one such angel. He was a seraphim, one of the highest orders of angels, who had six wings and sang the Trisagion to God. Though some believe he was an entirely different creation. Lucifer was born to be the perfect being in all ways, a beautiful body unparalleled by anything in heaven or the earth, a keen mind able to outwit any in the universe, and the skill to overcome all challenges. Lucifer was even said to be the minister of music in heaven, and considering the importance of singing the Trisagion prayer to God in his throne, this was an incredibly important job. Time passed, and Lucifer began to recognize his abilities were orders of magnitude above all others in the kingdom of heaven. Eventually, Lucifer would go so far as to believe his power was greater than God himself. Over time, Lucifer managed to amass an army whose number was one-third of all angels to fight against God and instate himself as the ruler of all. The plan was sure to work, if only Lucifer did not have one deadly sin. Pride. God sent Michael to do direct battle with Lucifer, a being of higher strength and martial prowess. To any other angel, it must have seemed like a suicide mission. Michael took the orders without hesitation, however, and Lucifer battled the Archangel. The fight was intense, but in the end, without question, Michael was the winner. Lucifer took too much pride in his body to get scarred, too much pride in his intelligence to be outwitted, and too much pride in his ability to retreat. All these added up and it led to his downfall. In the end, he was cast out of heaven, never to return. Those one-third of angels who brought Lucifer to be their new father were cast out alongside him to become what we now know as demons. The being who was once so great as to be called the Morning Star had now fallen to the absolute depths of hell. With his legion of angels who still harbor a portion of the divine power they once did, Lucifer aims to lead man astray and be the ultimate adversary, or Satan, to God. While Lucifer is a Satan to God, it would do him very little justice to simply call him adversary. He is the adversary of God, and the only one in all of existence to ever challenge him for his position, along with the undeniable ability to persuade even angels against God with his guile and charisma. Lucifer is no mere fallen angel. He is the catalyst of human suffering and doubt. He is the reason man suffers still to this day, and is unable to see the truth of the world. In the Gospel of John, there is concrete mention of Lucifer's influence on humans, here called the devil. After his famous forgiveness of the adulterous woman with the line, Let ye who is without sin cast the first stone, the Jews who doubted him surrounded Jesus and began to question him. They said God was their father, but then, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar, and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. From this, we can extrapolate that Lucifer's hold on mortal perception is so great that even the word of God cannot reach the people so many years after the morning stars fall. Later in the book, Jesus utters the words, Before Abraham was, I am. I am being the way God introduced himself to Moses as the burning bush with Ehia, translating to, I am. Even after all this, the people did not see the truth. All those who dwell in sin fall to the temptations of Lucifer. His hold on us is so profound that when good deeds are done, we come to understand that they please God. When bad deeds are done, they please Lucifer. And yet, the temptation of sin, to some, is much more alluring than any good deed. While Satan could be any adversarial agent of God, he isn't necessarily evil. As portrayed in Numbers, this can be one who opposes those who would do God's people harm, though that term was rendered antiquated by the time of Jesus. 
where Satan was a term used once for many entities. More recently, Jesus seems to have been the last heavenly being brought upon the earth to oppose the will of tempted humans, though revelations is still yet to occur. The next major event prophecy to come is in one such book of revelation. The seals on the scroll of God would be broken, the four horsemen would ride and destroy the earth, and then God would create a new heaven and a new earth. In Shin Megami Tensei, Lucifer is portrayed as a less objectively evil tempter and more in a mix of the Gnostic and Abrahamic interpretations of him. The Gnostic interpretation being that the supreme being of our world is simply the creator of earth, earth being the world of strife and suffering, the creator of it, therefore, must be evil, while the true father is something greater, something beyond. You can learn more about that in my Demiurge video. Lucifer's aim is to set humanity free from their bonds to Yahweh and create a world where they can rule, though oftentimes this involves a strict survival of the fittest mentality so he may not be as benevolent as he first appears. He is the prince of lies after all. To understand his design, we must ask what type of angel was Lucifer? I lightly touched on it previously. Well, that's a really difficult question to answer. From what we know, Lucifer believed himself to be greater than God and was said to be the most beautiful creature to have ever lived. Master of music and all things pleasing, presumably he had some power in the kingdom of heaven and was in relatively close proximity to God. With his multiple wings and power comparable to the strongest of the nine orders of angels leads me to believe he was a seraphim. Lucifer means light and is symbolically the morning star, so it would make sense that he is one of the burning ones. Now, not burning with God's light, but burning with envy and wickedness. Some say he was even the prince of all seraphim, and when he was cast down from heaven, we know one third of all angels fell alongside him. The specifics are unknown, but from interpretations of certain passages in the Bible, principalities and powers are viewed as the main forces of Lucifer on earth tempting mortals. According to Catholic demonology, Lucifer along with Leviathan and Beelzebub were the first to be cast out of heaven for their transgressions, each representing a different sin, most of all, pride in Lucifer. From this, his design is perfect. Six pure white wings, long flowing hair, flawless skin, and fair features. He lives up to his status as the most beautiful creature to have ever existed. As for Satan, his depiction is spot on as well. They are portrayed consistently from as early as SMT2 as an agent of God, not wholly evil. In Shin Megami Tensei 2, he first opposes the player, and if deemed worthy, he follows you to the kingdom of God where, still as an agent of Yahweh, continues to judge sins. Except this time, it's Yahweh's themselves. In Shin Megami Tensei 4, he is a boss guarding the door to Yahweh's throne and opposes the party as they lay siege to him. After being defeated, however, he allows passage. From these, we can understand that Satan is a figure who tests the will of man simply to see their resolve, whether that resolve is to enact the will of Yahweh or go against it. The design doesn't have so grand an explanation as Lucifer did, but there's still a lot to chew on. Just looking at it, it's difficult to discern what kind of creature this even is. It has six wings, six arms, and six breasts, signifying the mark of the beast, and it has a segmented skull and serpentine body, possibly to signify the leviathan or the draconic form Lucifer took when fighting Michael. The design is possibly an amalgamation of all Satans, from biblical texts and the ultimate evil form. I love the design either way, and these two characters are the first demons I think of when I think of Shin Megami Tensei. Well, that wraps up Lucifer and Satan. This video was a long time coming, and I'm glad I could finally talk about them. With them being so important to life in Abrahamic religions, I was surprised at how much there was to learn about them still. Let me know what you learned of Lucifer and Satan in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks to Anton, Big T, Ender Ladius, Frankie Stoned, Goose Kebab, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Konyuna, Matt M, Mr. Eight Eyes, The Digital Dutchman, The Toaster Messiah, Video Gamer 75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this supremely evil Lucifer and Satan lore explained, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.